I'm an adult NetServer developer. I mainly work on the enterprise part of uh, NetServer and in the last time I also have worked on uh, the community part of the NetServer PBX. Uh, do, you, do you ever try to install PBX on uh, NetServer? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I'm not asking to you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to talk on the community part. Okay, let's start with um, PBX on Linux. Having a Linux PBX has never been easy for a uh, Linux sysadmin because uh, um, on PBX you have always to uh, take care of obsolete protocols like the phone protocols are or uh, legacy code. But in the beginning of 2000, a scheme Asterisk. Asterisk is an open source PBX that made it easier to have a PBX. The problem with Asterisk is that because of its oldness, it's really hard to configure and um, you mainly have to write your dial plan by hand and even writing a simple dial plan requires power and uh, it's, not, it's not fun, it's unpleasant. But a few years after Asterisk came to us, Freepix has um, gave us a web interface to configure the Asterisk dial plan in a more user-friendly way using high-level concepts like, you know, Gibware or uh, Q group. Easy to configure. But installing Freepix is not so easy. You, if you want to install FreePBX by scratch, you probably uh, have to um, build Asterisk by yourself or use outdated packages from God's nowhere or um, install MySQL. You have a lot of configuration to do, but here come specialized distros like the FreePBX one. There are Linux distros that came with um, PBX in it. Maybe three PBX or I don't know Asterisk guy or uh, other PBX, and you just have to install it, run it, and you have a fully work uh, PBX. Now, why using NetServer? Why using a PBX on NetServer when we have a lot of specialized distro that already do it? This is what I think that are the, um, the pros of using NetServer as PBX and uh, I'd like to hear what you think about it. But the first one is that NetServer is multi-purpose, so you can install your PBX on a firewall, on a main server, on file server, whatever server. The second one is the, that NetServer is CentOS. It's not like CentOS based like the FreePBX distros or uh, other distro. It's CentOS and you can, you can install it over CentOS. So you can install it on a VPS and, um, and just uh, transform it in a net server. It's easy to configure. Uh, usually on, this, on those other distro when uh, you want to when you want to configure PBX, it's okay, but if you want to configure, I don't know, the, the email or uh, DNS or uh, eh, DHTP server, everything that you have to, to do, everything by hand. And on a server, you can do it just using the interface. It's stable because it's CentOS. It's up to date for the same reason. And they have a very active community. But let's take a look on why you maybe don't want to use NetServer as PBX and you want to use one of the other distro instead. Other distro can be specialized, so you you do uh, you install a, a distro that does, does only one thing and uh, hopefully do it well. 
is simpler and uh, usually simpler things are better colder um, all the distros that I look at are, uh, are all colder than that server and older mean, means more tested, more uh, documented, more used uh, bigger user base because of the fact that they are older bigger communities for the same reasons Usually they have a clearer paid support policies. On a server at the moment it's still not very clear how to have paid support. And if I'm going to use a PBX in an enterprise environment, um, I probably want to be sure that I have something that is ready to take my money and fix my problem. Usually I use PBX in an enterprise environment, so uh, this is very important. You have a commercial model available, and you have hopefully better documentation. So, why do we need to improve our PBX on that server and don't just leave it as it is? I took a look on the Disco Watch, and uh, almost every distro that have a PBX and they are specialized distros as double of the downloads of uh, net server. And I think that as much purpose this group will serve better. So how can we improve? The fact that net server is multi-purpose and not specialized and the fact that it is too young, we can't do anything about that. Because the fact that it's much purpose is also a point of strength, and uh, about the, 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 the two young, we have just to wait and, uh, and keep going. The bigger user base, it depends on uh, the, how, how the distro is sold, and uh, how the community is going, how the, if the product is a good product. We just need to keep doing things well, I think. Usually, other distros have community bigger, really bigger, I'm right? talking about the PBX community is very big, but it's not as active as our, and some other of this community have, um, they are toxic. And I think that we deserve, unless you deserve a big thank you on that. We can clarify how we want to do how, as Nexus, want to do a, um, a paid support policy. And uh, I think that we are working in that way and we can make it in, uh, in a few time. About the commercial model, we already took with Sangoma. As maybe you know, Nexus and Sangoma have commercial agreement. So they tell that it is possible for us to sell FreePBX commercial model on uh, even the community part, but at the moment we, we aren't doing this probably just because there isn't a lot of users that use uh, the, the server PBX community. But if it's needed, maybe we can do it in, a, in the future. We probably need write more documentation, not only about the software, about the installation, about the packages, but I'm talking about how tos blog posts, and uh, um, hands-on review. When you, when, you, when you have to install a PBX, you probably have to, um, to interface with phone hardware, with uh, lines, and uh, it, it's not easy if you start doing that. And if you find how to send article that tell you how to start from bare metal and having a, a working PBX, maybe it's easier for you to adopt a server instead of any other distros. And also can help find it on Google. Now I'd like to, to talk a little about how the net server PBX is done and uh, how the various parts of the system works because if you want to, to play with it, act with it, probably it's very useful to you. 
Okay, asterisk is the demon, is the demon that talked with the phone, and uh, he has his configuration file under slash add slash asterisk, and also in this directory there are the PLPAN configuration. When you use it with FPPX, like in our case, the um, some of the DRPAN configuration are routed directly by FPPX and are the, um, the files that are underscore addition in their name. FPPX is a web interface, it's like a normal web application and uh, it uses the asterisk MySQL database that despite the name has nothing to do with asterisk, it just contains the FreePBX database. Uh, there's also another database in MySQL that it is asterisk CDLDB. That one is written by asterisk and uh, contains the call log and queue log. But uh, in the asterisk database, you just can find the configuration of FreePBX. And if you have a problem with FreePBX guide, probably you just need to take a look at it and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, also, PPBX has a, a complex modular structure, but probably you don't want to know it. And uh, PPBX write the plan for asterisk and put it in slash etg slash asterisk. So what do NetServer PPBX? NetServer PPBX differs from the FreePBX um, distro mainly in, in the fact that because of the PHP version of CentOS 6 that we are using, we um, cannot use PHP 5.6, that is the one required by FreePBX 14, but we need to use, uh, yes, we need to use PHP 5.6, but CentOS at the 5.4, so we use it from SGL and uh, we use PHP at PM, to execute um, everything uh, is related to FreePBX in the PHP 5.6 SGL environment. That's what means that if you want to run by hand any of the FreePBX command, you also have to first load the PHP 5.6 SGL environment. HTTPD as a separate instance that is uh, run using asterisk user and uh, that's all. All those things are done by the NetServer FreePBX package. This package is installed with the FreePBX package and launched the FreePBX installation. That's because we cannot install directly the FreePBX files, but we need to uh, install the FreePBX starboard in the directory, then launch the FreePBX installation script, because FreePBX installation script requires to do some stuff that I don't know, but we can use <laughs> when we can just simply install the file. It also configures the backup. It configures the backup um, with the NetServer backup, Put in the asterisk db in the configuration backup, in the configuration backup, and the audio files in the data backup. It also configures the users. In NetServer 7, you can choose the, as you know, the user search that can be Active Directory or Open and Up. NetServer FreePBX just put the same configuration in the, in, into FreePBX, so when you open FreePBX you can find the same users that you have on NetServer interface. It configures Unix ODBC for Asterisk CDLDB and uh, put a configuration page on NetServer guide that allow to open FreePBX, Yacht, Operating CLDB and uh, other ports like web interface. Okay, end of the board part. Now, what's the difference between the community and the enterprise part? As I told you, the main part of the enterprise is uh, the community part. That's why we have a community version and the main packages of the community are also the uh, basement of the enterprise version. 
On the top of that, we have a REST API server that uh, is a PHP REST API server that is open source but uh, is not uh, part of NetServer on the uh, server community version because um, probably you don't care about having it. And uh, another web interface that is not open source, it's closed source and uh, communicate with REST API server. On that we have another node server that is also closed source, another web interface, closed source. And uh, Jones Gateway is a nice project that allow to use um, WebRTC communication so you can have a phone inside your browser using Jamus Gateway it's easier to write the client for uh, the WebRTC phone this is uh, available on the community you just have to install the server Jamus Gateway and uh, you can try it so let's talk about the future what we are going to do about the NetServer PBX to get it better. I'm not a community guy, so I hope that someone wants to share more on community about it and let let go know, let know everyone that we have a PBX that is <laughs> that is nice, it works, you can use it in production and yes, a few skills. So we can find bug. At the moment I think that Almost nobody are using it, apart from Marcus. <laughs> and uh, we need more users to find more bugs. So use it and share your experience. Also, if you want, you can have writing outputs and, as I, as I told you, hands-on review and uh, blog post, everything that can take users to us. I think that with that, we can help uh, more users and uh, help our PBX to and our distribution, our favorite distribution to grow. Also another thing that I didn't write here, I'd like to port it on um, ARM64 architecture. It's, I think, uh, an almost easy work and uh, could be funny because a lot of things, uh, a lot of people like to, to work on Raspberry. If you want to volunteer with the Raspberry T-shirt, you're welcome. <laughs> That's it. Those are my contacts. If you want to share your opinion with me, if you want to blame me for some bugs on the PBX part or whatever, just be free to be free to communicate with me. Can you tell us uh, what uh, the um, closed uh, web interface module does? What is it? This one is uh, a web interface that uses the REST API server um, that uses NetServer, that uses FreePBX low level function to create extension and other objects. And uh, the web interface is another face that um, live with FreePBX and allow user to easily configure uh, a PBX in uh, less time. FreePBX is not very user friendly. This one allows to to configure PBX in, in uh, very few time. The other one is like uh, FreePBX user control panel. That is a web interface for the user, the end user, not the administrator, but uh, the, the people that use the phone, uh, that show the state of folder extension and uh, allow you to see the um, uh, the queue, the, the call log, and uh, and other stuff. Okay, but uh, so why you, you say the the REST API server layer? Uh, is, uh, is not uh, interesting for a, a community point of view. Uh, if you don't have an interface on the community part, maybe you don't want to also install the uh, 
the REST server that works only with that interface, but it's open source. So if you want to take it and write in your your own uh, your own interface for that, you can do it. But I, I don't know if it's useful to package it. I can write it. it in cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> Another question? Don't be shy, don't be shy. Another question? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, if you, if you have any question, 